So with my engine and transmission now in place, I want to find out if this stock Isuzu differential is going to work for me. So in this video, I'm going to determine the diff ratio and then I want to calculate what my road speed will be for a given engine RPM. Coming up. Hey, how's the jokes and welcome back. If you don't know me, my name is Duff and I run a one-man shop out here in the middle of a forest on a small farm down in South Africa. I'm busy with my 1939 Hudson Big Boy Bolt. I've already got the cab mounted on a Isuzu, <laughs> Isuzu chassis. I've installed a Ford 351 Cleveland engine and a C4 auto transmission. And now I'm looking at my differential. I've currently got the stock Isuzu uh, differential but I don't think that's going to be a good marriage with the rest of my drivetrain. So I need to determine what the diff ratio is here. And then one, once I know that, I want to do a few calculations so that I can see what my road speed is going to be for give, a given engine RPM. So there are no markings or labels or tags or anything on this diff here. So currently I don't know what the diff ratio is. Um, one way to determine it would be to actually count the number of teeth on the ring gear and the number of teeth on the pinion and then I can divide the pinion number into the ring gear number and I will then be able to know the diff ratio that way but that would mean I have to take the differential apart strip the parts out and I really don't feel like doing that so I'm going to use another method to determine my diff ratio so the first thing I'm going to do here is to jack up the back end until the wheels are off the ground and now they are free to turn. So with an open diff like this one, if you turn the one side, the wheel on the opposite side will turn in the opposite direction. So to prevent that, I'm going to now first block up the wheel on this side. So I'm going to jam some wooden blocks in here by the one wheel like that so to prevent it from turning so now it is blocked up and jammed in so this one can't turn so with the wheel on the other side blocked up to prevent it from turning if I now turn this wheel you will see that uh, look there you're on the input side of the differential on that flange that part is turning now Obviously, if you've got the prop shaft still connected, you must put the car in neutral, otherwise it's not going to work. I've clamped on this piece of metal and I'm going to stick on a piece of masking tape here onto the tire. So I've now created a reference point so that I can know when I turn the tire or the wheel once I've done one revolution. two revolutions and so forth. If your car has got fenders, let's uh, assume this is the fender, then you can also just put a piece of tape onto the fender and onto the tire there and that will also still give you a point of reference. You can even do it on the ground with a piece of tape and a piece of tape on the tire. Whatever works man, as long as we have a reference point to count revolutions. Okay, so with these two marks still lining up, I've now clamped on this ruler here on a, in a vertical position. So if your prop shaft is still on, you can make a mark with a piece of masking tape or a paint pen or whatever, as long as you've got some kind of reference. And now we will see if I turn my wheel, how my ruler is rotating. So let's do one rotation of the wheel and see what we get there. One rotation on the differential, but I'm not through with my rotation on the tire yet. So let's keep going here. I'm, I need to now look in two places. <laughs> That's two rotations and I'm not quite lined up here. Take it to that point. And it's actually a little bit more than two rotations. 
So it means one rotation of the wheel gives me two and maybe a quarter rotations on the differential input there. Uh, but to make it more accurate, I'm going to do 10 rotations on my wheel and count my rotations there. And then we see what we get. I'm not sure this is going to work for me. I need to look in two places. So I need to rotate my tire 10 times and also count my pinion shaft rotations. Let's give it a shot. So I've got one, two on the pinion. And that's one on the tire. Let's try. That's a... Uh, no, no, I'm getting confused now. I can't do this by myself. I need help. <laughs> okay, so I've asked my better half, Ellie, to come and help me here. Because as you've seen, it's impossible to do this by yourself. So she's going to rotate the wheel through 10 rotations, babes. Okay. Keep focused there. Yes. And I will count the rotations here. So my wife is not very keen to appear in a public domain, <laughs> but we will be seeing her beautiful hands and they will be visible to the whole world <laughs> to see. <laughs> it's just because I've got my working clothes on. We always have working clothes on because uh, she runs a farm. These are particularly bad today. I'm not uh, coming on the movie. Right, are you ready, babes? Yes. Anytime you remember, now I'm going to count loud. You must focus now 10 rotations. Okay, babes, are you ready? Yes. Right, let's go. Ten turns on your side, eh? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. Are you sure? Wow! So I've got 23 and I would almost say that's about three quarters. Okay. So you did 10 turns? I'm pretty sure, but you, your counting out in the background is... Uh, Confusing is that we might have to do it again. Alright, I'll do it again. To double check. So I've had uh, 23. Okay, I'm going to count quietly this Why time. I think I'm confusing my poor wife. I'm going to count quietly now. Do and we do it again. Do your fingers to the camera. No, I'm not the finger pointer. <laughs> you are. Okay. Okay, is it on the mark there? Let me just yes. reset this. So you are on the mark. I will now count quietly and not confuse you. Please. Right. Okay. Anytime you're ready, we can go. Okay, go. Ten. Yes. I've got the same result, 23 and a little bit more than a half. Good. So um, I'm going to call it 23 and make it 23.7. Okay, so Ali made 10 wheel rotations and then I counted 23.7 pinion shaft rotations. More or less, could have been a little bit more, but close enough. So I would like to turn this into a 1, obviously, so I'm going to divide it by 10 on this side and then also divide by 10 on that side, so I then get 1 here and there I will get 20, no, <laughs> 2.37. Okay, but that's not the end of the story. This is a standard open differential and a short way to say would be that I've only been working with half of it. So I actually need to multiply this with 2. If you want to understand that better, why I multiply with 2, it's quite an involved and a long story. Um, I suggest you go look at some videos on exactly how an open differential works. It's fascinating engineering and then you'll understand it much better. It's, it's quite a long story, I'm not going to get into it now. So therefore now we end up with 1, 2, 
multiply this with 2, I get, what is it, 4.74. So that is my diff ratio. Now I did look up what actual differential ratios are available for Isuzu's. And the closest one I get is 4.77. So we're pretty much on track. I mean, like I said, that 0 0.7 is a rough guess. I'm close enough. So I can already see that this diff ratio is not going to work for me. But let's look at it further and understand why I'm saying that. Just to have a number, let's assume engine revolutions are 3000 RPM. The final drive on my particular C4 transmission is one to one. So that would mean if the engine RPMs is 3000, the RPM here on the output shaft will also be 3000. If your gearbox has an overdrive, this will be less than engine RPM depending on that overdrive ratio. So engine RPM is 3000. The final drive on my transmission is one to one. So prop shaft RPM will also be 3000. And that will obviously mean that my pinion shaft RPM remains 3000. And now that diff ratio will determine the RPM that we get on the wheels. So diff ratio will reduce side shaft RPM and obviously the side shaft RPM will also be the RPM of the actual wheel. So just to simplify the calculation, let's assume we have a diff ratio of 1 to 3. We're coming in with 3000 RPM. On the side shaft we're going to be getting 1000 RPM. And therefore the wheel itself will also be turning at 1000 RPM, assuming that we use the figures that I've just mentioned. So given the figures that we've been using, my wheel is now spinning at 1000 RPM. But I want to know what my cruising speed will be. So how am I going to do that? So the first factor that's going to make a difference is the actual diameter of the tire. Because the diameter of the tire determines the circumference. Let's have a look at that. Okay, firstly, if you wonder why there's two wheels here now, it's just because I'm too lazy to take the one off the truck. So I've just brought in another loose, rather dirty <laughs> wheel. So obviously, mathematically, if we know the diameter of a tire, we can calculate the circumference, but I would just like to demonstrate the concept. So what I've done is I've made a reference mark here on the tire and one on the floor. And if I now roll the tire through one rotation, we will actually be able to see how far it's traveled or what the distance would be. So right at that point is one rotation of the wheel. And I can now make another mark on the ground here, measure the distance between the two marks, and I will actually know my distance traveled for one rotation. Okay, I've got my other mark on the ground here, so I'm going to now measure this distance. And I'm going to do it in uh, millimeters, because it's just so much easier, as you will see just now. But yeah, if you want to work in the imperial system and measure inches and feet, I guess it's also feasible. <laughs> it's just going to be a little bit more difficult. So I am measuring a distance of, let's see, 2,100 and let's call it 90 millimeters, 2,190 millimeters. So let's crunch some numbers. I've written down a bunch of stuff here. <laughs> but let's work through it slowly. So one wheel rotation, we measure 2190 millimeters, which is the same as 2.19 meters. You just divide it with a thousand. This is why I like the metric system so much, because it's actually easy. If we have a thousand wheel RPMs, we obviously need to multiply the 2.19 meters with a thousand minutes because we're bringing minutes into play. 
That comes to 2,190 meters a minute. Metric system again to convert meters to kilometers divided with a thousand. So we've got 2.19 kilometers per minute traveled at a thousand real RPMs. Now all we need to do is convert this into hours. So we multiply with 60 and we end up with a speed of 131.4 kilometers per hour. I've never attempted to do this in the imperial system. I'm sure it works as well. You just got to know how to convert feet and inches and all the rest of it into miles per hour. I'm sure it's doable. I'm just not familiar with it. So this is of course based on a bunch of given parameters. We've assumed an engine RPM of 3000 revolutions per minute. A transmission final drive ratio of 1 to 1, a diff ratio of 1 to 3, and a given tire size. So this is going to be affected by all of these different, what do we call them, parameters. So now I want to do the calculations again, but this time I'm going to use the specs that I currently have. 4.77 on the diff ratio. I'm going to keep the same tire size. I've got 1.1 on the transmission. But this time I'm going to slow my engine RPM down a little bit to say 2500. And then we can see and calculate what my cruising speed's going to be with the engine turning a little bit slower at 2500 RPM. Okay, so here it is. Um, one wheel rotation will still give me 2.19 meters of travel or distance. My new specs here, yeah? engine RPM at 2500, transmission remains 1 to 1, and the diff ratio is now what I currently have in the truck 4.77. So if I divide my engine RPM by transmission, yeah, well, it doesn't make no difference, divided by 4.77, so my RPM at the wheel will only be 524 RPM. Multiply that with the distance, I get 1148 meters per minute, convert it to kilometers and multiply with 60 minutes to get it to hours and look at what I end up with. 68.8 kilometers an hour. That's ridiculous, man. So it means that at, with the given tire size and diff ratio, when my engine is turning 2,500 RPM, I will be doing that speed. I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> I don't want that, man. So the only way to improve this figure would be to either... I mean, I want to keep the engine RPMs fixed. I could change the transmission for one with an overdrive. I'm not going to do that. Um, I, might, I, I think I'm going to end up having to change the diff to get that number lower, but we can try one other thing. Let's try a bigger wheel size because that also doesn't have an effect. So I'm going to do a calculation for a bigger wheel size. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, do a calculation for a big old 35 inch tire like this one. I really don't think it will suit the look of the truck, but let's just do it for the sake of the exercise. <laughs> So there it is, a 35 inch tire has got a diameter of 890 millimeters. To calculate the circumference, I'm not going to measure it on the floor this time. I multiply the diameter with pi. I'm sure you know what pi is. The numerical value is about 3.14159 something 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 on into infinity. And I get the answer of 2.8 meters. So the distance traveled in one rotation of this big old tire will be 2.8 meters. I plug that into my calculation like I had before. Everything else here remains the same. And look, I have increased my speed now to 88 kilometers an hour. But that's still not enough, man. I mean, this could maybe work for an off-road machine, depending on what you want to do. I mean, you can even go bigger with the tire size. 
but that's not what I want. All right. <laughs> So I've established that this diff ratio is not going to work for me. I don't want to run such a big tire. I think like maybe 30 inch thereabouts maximum. And I definitely want a higher cruising speed. I'd like to aim for about 120 kilometers an hour at 2500 RPM, something in that range. So this puppy is not going to work for me. I need to go hunting for another diff with a ratio in the region of 3 to 1 or even possibly less than 3 to 1 it's going to depend on what I can find so wish me luck in my search for another diff my namesake <laughs> by the way all these calculations can be done with online calculators there are quite a few available if you start looking on Google but you know what exercising those brain cells is a good thing to do I mean, look around you in the world today. There's not enough of it happening anymore, man. So uh, at, at least this way <laughs> does show the concept of it. It's not that difficult and it gives very good understanding. So yeah, I feel, um, why not? Let's use the old brain cells a little bit and do it this way. Your choice. Hey, listen, your Oaks, thanks for hanging out with me out here in the shop. I enjoyed it. Um, I'll see you in the next video. Until then. Have a lucky one.